Okay, so today I wanted to bring everybody up to speed on where we're at with the ESP32 dev kit that we've been working on and show you some of the things that I've been dealing with that I haven't um, you know, been streaming about because they're just little things, but they pile up. So I want to show all the, the process. Really what I do want to do here is show the entire process of what it takes to uh, create something like this and the types of things that you might have to deal with. And so um, I want to uh, show you some things that I got from PCBWay. So if you'll remember, we finished our layout. We sent our design to PCBWay with a bill of materials that we created. And now uh, we're waiting on them to fab and assemble it. Fab make, being making the, the PCB, um, you know, like this. And then assembly, meaning putting all the parts on that printed circuit board. And so let me show you uh, some of the things that I got from them. So <laughs> the very first thing I got, which ugh, made me sad, and we'll talk about it here in a second, is I got a picture. Oh, how do I scroll over? They said, hey, this part that you told us to order, which is this header right here, uh, doesn't fit on your footprint. As you can see, the pins on this side, th right now the, this is centered where it should be between the two standoff uh, markings here. And it lines up with this side of the footprint instead of this side of the footprint. And so what we really need here is this pad that's right here needs to be here and then this pad needs to be here so essentially we need a mirror of the footprint and what you might be thinking is what i was thinking at first which i realized now was dumb is why don't we just flip it around and it doesn't work that way because there's an extra space on this end of the header that's not on this and so if you flip it around you have the same problem it it's still it's it's the wrong footprint for the part and What's extra funny about this is I'm gonna launch KiCad and open this up. Here's our, our footprint up here. And again, we want this pad right here to be up here and this pad to be there. We could just mirror this, but I recall when I was working on this, we come in here to change footprint. You can see that the footprint that we're using is this 2.54 millimeter pin socket, one by 10 vertical SMD, pin one left. And excuse me, I remember when we were looking at this, I remember specifically thinking, pin one left, that's dumb. What's the difference between pin one left and pin one right? And it's right here. Uh, I'm gonna resize this, maybe. Yeah, there's a pin one left and a pin one right. And watch the footprint when I change it. Remember, I want this pin to be over here and this one here, I want it to mirror. Well, watch what happens when we change these. It's a mirror. And so what I really want is pin one right. And I, I remember thinking when I was laying this out, pin one left, pin one right, like who cares? If you want pin one on the left, you make it on the left you want pin one right just flip the header around and mount it that way um it doesn't really matter it absolutely matters and so what i really want is pin one right so if i were to select this um i want to change the selected footprint to pin one right from left i believe we should see it change exactly how we want the problem is like if i do apply yep there we go perfect you see that it switched the problem we have now, and I'm not gonna do it right now, is that if we show our copper, we've, we made all the traces for the footprint being the other way. And we did our fill with the footprint being the other way. And so what we really need to do is use this footprint here and redo those traces. Now, not completely redo them. So if we do the forward here, um, actually let's do back since that's how most of those traces get up there. Um, all these traces that go up like this now needs to go here. So we could, um, 
you know, just pop it up over here and come over. It, it shouldn't be a too big of a deal. The same thing here. Instead of this coming to here, it needs to come to there. It, it shouldn't take me too long, maybe 20 minutes to fix all of these traces so that they go to the pins on the right side. But this was, I got the email and I just, I knew it. I knew something was messed up. And so uh, that was our first big thing. So that means that we're not going, so they asked me in the email, they said, do you want us to, um, what do you want us to do? Um, and I said, well, obviously they can't connect it. And I don't want them to connect it like they have it here in the picture where it's off center. That's not going to work either or have it hanging off the board. So I just said, don't place it. Put it in the box when you send me the boards. And um, I'll have the headers on hand here. But I'm not going to be able to use them. But I can still test that the header pins, like the pins that I've broken out to the header work by just soldering wires onto it. And so we'll, we'll fix it in the next uh, hardware run that we do we'll have that fixed so that was one major mistake uh, that i made so uh, after uh, we got through that another email i got was this one right here they sent me this picture and they said here are some diodes can you please confirm the orientation of the diodes um and i i told them not to print the silk screen and so they don't have any indicator on the silk screen to show them what the orientation is and so that's where I just launch KiCad and I come in and I look and make sure that yes, in fact, this diode down here should be um, the, the strip. I don't know how well I can zoom in on it here. You can see the diodes have a little strip on them to help with orientation. That is the correct orientation for this one. These are actually bi-directional TBS diodes that um, are part of on, are on the USB lines. And so those are, um, like I said, bi-directional, so it doesn't really matter which way they go in. As far as I understand, I could be wrong on that, but um, being bi-directional orientation shouldn't matter on those. So uh, again, you're going to get these emails and they're going to ask you questions like, is, is this right? And when they sent me this, they said, you know, please let us know. And then we're ready to finish up the rest of your boards. And you can, they even said you'll notice that we didn't fully solder the through hole because they also asked on the orientation for that uh, just in case they need to make change so they'll email you and then the process is frozen so if you're not paying attention like this could sit for days and it's just holding up your board so when they send you these emails again if you want the boards back sooner than later you answer them i got back to them said everything looks good with these and i got an email i think probably 20 minutes after i responded that said your boards have shipped um or your boards are ready for shipping um so again very there's just five like as soon as they got the email they finished everything up and were ready to ship it so uh, they also included uh, a picture of the front which is looking really cool uh everything looks i don't know nice and fancy again we're not gonna have the header on it because i'm an idiot uh, but everything else looks pretty good as far as I could tell from inspecting this. While I had it, I made sure that the FTDI chip was oriented correctly, uh, as well as the, the PMIC down here, uh, just in case. Um, it's good to validate those things. And so the last thing they wanted to verify was that the this was oriented correctly facing in instead of facing out, which indeed it is supposed to be facing in. So that was correct as well. And I uh, validated that for them. So the other thing I wanted to update you on, so this is all around fab and assembly, and my boards are in the mail. So they should be here any day now, and I can't wait to do a video uh, where we're trying to bring that up and make sure, you know, just to make sure it turns on and we could program an ESP32. That would be really, really cool. Um, the other thing I got was in an email was this. Dear Value DigiKey customer, you have purchased the following part number from DigiKey within the last two years. The manufacturer has announced an update to the part status. This is the MBR0530. And if we come back over here, um, I believe that's these diodes right here. MBR0530, yep, okay. So these three diodes that I've chosen, and again, we are tracking our bill of materials right in KiCad so that we can export it and automate all that. And we don't have to have a separate list maintained outside of the schematic. It's all together. Um, so this part number is 
in the schematic here, this MBR0530. So these three diodes are all that same part number. And DigiKey is sending me an email saying um, it's end of life. And this, again, I've talked about the capacitors coming in and out of stock and availability. Um, I wasn't expecting this for the diodes. And it's really cool that I had, since I had placed an order with DigiKey, because I manually bought all these parts on a, on a previous run, of the pucks they are letting me know which i think is a really cool feature and so um, i came the the link brings you to this page right here and it says uh here this is the part that's obsolete that you ordered and here are some replacement parts and uh who the manufacturer is and so the manufacturer for the original one was on semiconductor and they've worked well and so I just came down here, look at this, on semiconductor has this MBR0503 T, like a whole bunch of other things. And you'll see that it's 30 volts, just like the one I'm currently using, and it's 500 milliamp, and the package is the uh, SOD123. And so uh, I came into here, you can see we have 200,000 in stock, the lead time is fairly short, and so it looks like this would be a perfectly acceptable um, I don't want the DigiKey part number, the manufacturer part. This will be a perfect replacement. And so I'm just gonna, well, actually, I'm not gonna copy that. I'm gonna use a little thing here, copy. And let's just replace it right now. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna take me to the diode here on the schematic view. Well, yeah, here there. And then let's just, Change the text on these to that. Um, move it slightly. Uh, like that. And we'll just edit all of these. Uh, this is not editing the part number. This is just editing the this uh, schematic indicator here. So we'll change it here as well. Move that up. Okay, those are all look good. And now we'll actually edit the part. Uh, it's the, the description is actually the same. The, and then the part number we will change to be that. Say so, okay. I don't think the the data sheet really matters, but we'll change the part number here as well. Oh, did it change it everywhere? Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, it didn't select the new one. Symbol, I'm not sure why it's giving me a hard time right now. Not highlighting. Oh, there it is. Okay, all right, and we'll change it there. And we'll change it here as well. And just for kicks, because I don't like that it's not highlighting for some reason. Oh, now I'm just causing all kinds of problems. Um, let's come over to here and make sure, yep, yeah, okay. So D2, 3, and 4, the value is the same for all of them. And then we should have a part number over here, which is the same for all three of them. So we've got that change in. Perfect, Let's save that. All right, and so we're all set there as well. So just some of the things that we're dealing with as we're going through the process here. Of, um, again, I'm really excited to get the boards in so that we can start testing them. Um, I, I plan to do a little bit of pre-work on uh, getting the ESP32 stuff set up. I really want to establish a uh, a baseline of what that is like what am i trying to say i want this to be all automated and slick and handled and not just like a maker project where i've cobbled things together like i want a fixed dev environment that's very clean and set up so that almost everything is automated to a point where i can build firmware flash firmware and things like that um mostly through command line 
Um, it's fun to have IDEs and I'll use VS code and things like that, but I don't want to have a, a dependency on having to flash things through a special IDE or anything like that. I did look a bunch into platform IO was considering using it, but I don't know. There's just some things about it. His big point with platform IO is not tool lock in, but you do have tool lock in, um, ironically for things like testing because he's chosen a test suite and he's chosen um, some other things and, and put a very nice wrapper on, by the way, I've, I don't have anything against platform IO, but again, I'm looking for something a little more control than even platform IO gives me. Um, and I know I could, it's open source and I could extend it to do like a different unit test suite than the one he has, but um, I don't want to mess with that. I might as well just set it up from scratch myself anyway. So that's uh, kind of the stuff that's coming up. Um, again, I hope to have boards soon in the next few days, and then we'll do uh, a video on that and seeing how those are, are working and or if they're working. I sure hope so. Um, so anyway, just wanted to share a few of the things that uh, have been going on since the last video and um, just, again, show you the process that uh, we're going through to, to get this stuff done. So hopefully you're finding that useful. If you have any questions, or anything didn't make sense here, I'm happy to answer them. Just stick them in the uh, comments below if you're watching this on YouTube after the stream. Uh, and uh, if you're not watching the live stream, follow me on Twitch. Come and join the live stream. I would love to chat with you over there. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next time.